Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Another episode of uh, Virtual Education with Shark Fin Shears. We're just going to, we're just going to uh, let every, give a few minutes here to let, let everybody log on because everybody's probably been hanging out in a waiting room, et cetera. Um, I got my boy, the real Joey Blades, with us today. What do you go by, Joey? Yeah, I go by Joey. Yeah, I, I thought so. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. So, uh, upstate New York. Yes, sir, Rochester. Right. I hope everybody's healthy. Hope everybody's happy. Obviously, we're as happy as we can be. I'd be much happier if I wasn't on quarantine, but that's a whole other story, right? So oh, yeah. we're just here to lay down some knowledge today. I'm stoked that you guys could join us. Uh, if you're not aware, um, which you probably are because I've been pelting everybody with emails. If you're not aware, we have some sort of education going on every single day through May 2nd at this point. All of the registration links for education are on our website, sharkfinshears.com, under, under the education tab or the virtual calendar tab. If you've missed anybody that we've had on, DJ Muldoon, Anthony Edge, those can be found on our YouTube page. Sharkfin Shears is the name of the channel. Uh, check it out. Uh, lots of great stuff. So without further ado, we're going to do some uh, modern concept barbering today with with joey uh joey's one of our ambassadors he's he's a barber slash hairstylist he's been doing hair for about 12 years uh we met recently we're able to hang out recently uh we i take pride we take pride Sharkfin does in aligning ourselves with people who are passionate and educated and uh that's why he's part of our team so Without further ado, Joey's going to take over, introduce himself, let us know what he's going to do. If you guys have questions, ask me and I'll let him know. And don't forget to vote in the polls, which I'll launch in a minute. So thanks for coming in and uh, enjoy. Take it away, my man. Awesome. So uh, Willie already did a pretty good job uh, introducing me. So uh, I'm just going to jump into the haircut. Now, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to do a light fade. It's going to drop below the head. And I'm going to build some texture on the top. I'm going to build some texture on the top, and I'm really going to give it some movement in the top here. So, using my clipper, I'm going to use my favorite area to start the fade from. I'm going to come in and wear. These two points line up on the hairline. It's usually a curve here and usually a square here, but mannequins don't really got a square. I'm going to start my fade there, drop it down around the occipital bone, and start building my shape off of that. Using my one and a half guard closed. It's okay if I nip some of the bangs, won't hurt anything. Now, when I make my guidelines, I like to make a nice definite guideline without making it sketchy or whatever, because uh, a nice clean guideline always makes a nice clean fade. So you see, I got it dropping down to create the shape that I'm gonna build off of from the back and the top. Bye bye mullet. Now, since I'm making a guide, I don't necessarily have to go in and scoop out because it's all going to get faded anyway with my shears. So I'm coming right up to the line. I use the comb to hold the hair so I don't go above what I actually want to cut. Same on this side. Same point of reference. I'm coming in where the hairline meets at the point right here. Holding down the hair with my comb. Coming in. 
I'm making a nice clean cut for my guideline. There's a lot of bulk on this mannequin because I, the other day on a class that I did uh, regarding the Tiger King haircut. <laughs> so, don't mind. Now, as you notice, I actually cut both sides of the head separately. A lot of people will go all the way around. Me personally, it's all preference. I like to come in establish my two points and join them in the back just the way i've been cutting hair for the past 10 years that way in the back looking good so far man we're having a little bit of audio or video issue a little bit of skipping on my end hopefully yeah, it's not I that way for everybody I uh, I can only see myself in a little thing. Let me try to make it bigger. I don't know what happened. Whatever. I don't need to see myself. You're 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 good because you should full screen on their end, man. Awesome. So I've joined my guidelines, starting at the reference point in the front all the way to my reference point in the back. I like to go over it a couple times, make sure it's nice and clean. You don't want them getting home and then the significant other says, oh, wow, they missed the hair. You gotta, you know, stick them out your ear or whatnot. So make sure your work is clean before you continue on to your next step. Hey, as you carry on, just be mindful to move the mannequin. Keep in mind, uh, I, at barbering, it's tougher than the last couple of days with long hair, but just keep in mind, uh, work kind of slow in case I need to shift you for a better angle, please. Okay. So our, our guideline has now been cut. Now doing that, we're gonna establish the length for the top. Right now it's about three inches long, three and a half. We're going to go through, we're going to take about half an inch off just to give some more movement in the top. Now, the main thing when doing the length on top, a lot of people like to grab a big clump of hair. What they don't realize, what they just did, is they over-directed this hair here all the way back here. Now you got three different lengths in there because you got the length that you wanted, the length that's a little bit over-directed, then you got the length that's way over-directed towards the back. So I'm going to use quarter inch to half inch some sections to cut my length on top. Me personally, I like to comb everything over to one side. This way I can see what I'm doing and when I make my, my partings, they come out nice and clean and this is out the way. All that over to the right or left, whatever you feel comfortable with. I'm coming in, drop down my frame here. I'm coming in with my quarter inch subsection. Now I have to work with the round of the head because we're almost putting a uniform cut in here. So I'm going to make my length that I want. It's going to be right here. It's about an inch off. I'm going to do it all the way across. Make sure you keep the other hair out the way that you don't want to cut. It's only going to be more trouble for you in the long run when you go through a cross check. There's Are that. you elevating 90 degree from the head shape? Yes, yes. So I'm, everything is coming straight up the top on the round of the head. Thank you. Take, taking another quarter inch subsection, I'm going to be grabbing, and there's going to be little pieces. I'm not going to grab the whole section I just cut, but just enough so I have a guide on this first cut. Then I'm going to use the first cut and use that as my guide. So I'm combing it up. You see my guide right here. And you cut. So the stationary the next, guide or traveling? Um, 
this is going to be a stationary guide. It's going to stay here. Actually, no, it's a traveling guide. I'm sorry. That's okay. Thank you. So, 90 degrees off the head. Uniform. We want all this hair to be the same exact length. Make my next subsection. Same thing. Now you got to remember, towards cutting the front, the head no longer is flat. Your highest point is your apex where your comb rests, and the rest gets round going down towards the face. So as I come forward, I'm no longer pulling straight up. I'm going to be coming out more to maintain that 90 degree cut. So combing this up. There's my guide. Let me cut it. Don't pass your second knuckle. I got scars to prove why not. Now I can see the hair is starting to get more, more, uh, more movement in it. It's no longer laying down, I'm looking like a horse licked his head. So now I can actually start seeing what the look is going to be for when I'm done with this haircut. Next subsection. Same thing as the last one. Come here up and kind of out at this point because the head is starting to go down on me. Cut. Now, if you go through and all your sections are nice and clean and you've cut it all evenly the way you're supposed to, you shouldn't have much cross-checking to do because it should all be pretty clean already. But we still cross-check anyways to make sure our work is proper. And I am using my Sharkfin Professional Plus. This is a 440A Hitachi steel. So mannequins tend to have, re this, I don't know if this is all human hair, but mannequins, some of them got all human, some of them are mixed with other animals and stuff. And uh, the hair tends to be really hard compared to human hair. So this blade here is very sharp and I can get through this mannequin hair no problem. So now, coming straight down because the hair grows down. Follow my guide. Now for the back, I'm not really going to come and try to cut backwards. When I go and do my cross checking, I'm going to join the back length with the top length. Starting my cross checking now. You can only see a couple little bits sticking up, nothing too extreme because I have very clean and very uh, small subsections. So I'm going to actually turn my mannequin for when I show you guys how to join the back to the top and start building out that shape. Nice texture. So coming in like this, I'm picking up this hair. Now you see, this is my length. This is the length I want. I have to meet it at the same time following the head shape to the back. Now, a lot of people will go and cut the back shorter because the head shape is round and it's tallest right here. So if, if you don't style it right, you might look like alfalfa and the hair is gonna stick up in the back. But if you cut it all even, when you start building the shape itself around the head, you shouldn't have that problem. Now, I'm going to do, the hair in the back doesn't really matter if it's, if it's long right now because when I come around, I connect the original one and a half length to the top and the sides. It's all going to fall into place. So you don't got to worry about making all this 
the same length as the top, that's okay. Now, coming in, I'm gonna start at my sides. I'm gonna start connecting. Now, if you notice, the head is round. So if I put my comb up top and my shear on the side, it's a square shape. So if I wanna come and connect these, I have to cut a square shape into it. Comb it, I got the top right here and then there's a little length down here. I'm gonna connect those. I'm doing this all the way around the head. Because when I go through for my shear over comb technique, it's gonna be less work for me to do. Some people will come in and they'll not do this step and then just chop and chop and chop and chop it for hours. It's really just a bunch of unnecessary work that you could avoid it by doing this step here. So obviously the head is rounder here. I want to build my shape off of this. So I'm going to make my square cut kind of angled out so I have more play in here. That's such an important part of the head and can create so much. Um, yeah. If you cut that off, you take away so much of the shape and support uh, and the, the identity of the haircut. So it's so important to understand the look you're going for in, in the crown when doing barbering or short haircutting, whether it's men or women. It's really easy to make it square and make it more feminine or make it round and make it less feminine uh, on accident. And uh, a lot of people, nobody's parietal ridge is the same as everyone else's. You know, it, it might be more prominent. It might be up higher in their head. So if you go and you whack all this hair out, you're gonna lose that shape. Now, say someone has a really prominent bone around the side and there's a dent in here, you cut all that hair out, the shape's not gonna be contoured to the head. It's gonna be short, dent in, and then come out. So I really wanna maintain the integrity of the shape of this hair and the head. So I'm gonna build everything off of the parts that stick out most. You know what I mean? Because if I don't, then you're gonna see the head shape itself and the hair is gonna be doing something totally different. So like I said, you find your guide, which is the length, and you connect the two lengths. Obviously the whole haircut's not done. It's not gonna be faded yet. So people think, oh my gosh, it's not, it's not blended. It's okay because from here, to here is blended. This isn't blended because it's just with a clipper. Now, that's all gonna be scissor over comb or your shear over comb. Some people do clipper over comb. I personally like to do shear over comb because you get more of a soft cut, and more of a soft blend versus a real harsh blend. That's what we got so far. It's not that bad. I don't have much more work to do because this is all connected in here. It's only one little line across and it's gonna get taken out with my scissor over comb. Bring this a little higher. When doing scissor over comb, the main important issue a lot of people do is they dig. This comb, the width of it, is a lot shorter than a one and a half. It's so a one and a half is a little under a two. Not as small as this. So when I come in, I'm not digging in and cutting all the way to my comb. I'm going above the length of the sides that I cut. I'm just gliding along that and cutting what sticks out and following the shape of the head, but I'm letting the comb and the scissors leave the head. So you come in, hold your comb like this, not like that. Like this. Joe, Joey, Joey. Yeah. Spinner 180 degrees. What? Let us let us see you. Let keep going, keep going, keep going, and you're going to be on standing on the other side now. There you go. You want to see like that? You can't no, I want to see you cutting the right side on on the side. Right side, okay. Yes. All right. So there's that. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna start letting the comb float along my length on the bottom. And I'm gonna start cutting off the bulk that's sticking out. I don't have to worry about cutting in here because this is all cut. It's all blended to the length. All I'm worrying about is this quarter to half inch subsection in here. 
along with Brad O'Rich. Remember, if you're not used to doing this technique, cut a little bit at a time, because you could always cut more off. But once it's on the ground, it stays there. Rotator where she's facing forward now. So as you see now, you can look from the side, you can see the shape of the cut that I'm creating. I'm not creating a crazy wedge look. I'm not doing crazy tight military style. It's all just softly fitting into the top and disappearing. The softness is going to complement the texture that I'm going to cut in the top. It's going to make everything just flow together. Now you're going to do this all the way around the head, both sides. I prefer to do the sides first. I'm going to do this side now. Same thing. Let the comb leave the head. A little bit at a time. If not too much, you're gonna end up with a hole. Once you get a hole, if you don't know how to blend it and mask it, you're gonna have to go through and do the haircut all the way to where the hole is. Now you might notice that I comb a lot after I cut. It's because when you're doing a fade, you want a clean work surface. Because if you got hair lingering all over, you don't know what's cut and what's not. So you comb. After you make your cuts, you comb the hair that you just cut away from your surface. Now you have a clear vision of what you have to do and what you don't have to do. So as I'm getting to the back, I'm starting to follow the head shape. I'm not going straight up anymore. I'm following it out so I can build the shape towards the back. Now we're at the back. I'm not going all the way up. This is already cut. I'm coming, I'm going up and out. I'm letting the comb leave the head. I'll let the comb follow the head. We're gonna lose this whole shape back here. That's gonna be a flat spot. So I'm coming with my comb, cutting what needs to be cut right here only. This is already done. And I'm leaving as I go. Now with your scissor over comb or shear over comb technique, wherever your comb goes, your shears will follow as you cut. Because if you, you gotta make sure you're only using your thumb. This blade stays stationary on your comb. The top blade cuts versus this. And you're just cutting whatever is hitting your comb. There's no real technique, no plan. Okay. Same thing again. Now, some stop, people stop, stop, stop. Spinner a tiny bit to your right, I think. Spinner just a tiny bit. Nope. Okay, then it's your left. Stop. Now go into cutting position for me. Where you were standing. Nope, where you were standing. Turn her a little more um, towards your comb, a tiny bit. Perfect. Cool. Go for it. Okay. Uh, where was I? <laughs> you, were, you were talking about how high how high to go and stay staying below because the hair is already cut. Moving yeah, the yeah. thumb, moving the comb, yeah, scissors yeah. following the comb. So, as you see, if you put the comb right here, you're gonna have a shape, and you almost want the cut to follow this shape because I'm building the shape on the back of the head. So, I no longer have to worry about what's in here. This is cut. I know what I was talking about now. 
Um, a lot of people go in with their texture items here and try to whack everything in here just to make it blend. What you're doing with that is you're losing shape. You're creating different lengths in here that you might not want. So with my regular shear, I can go in and I can cut precisely the hairs that I want to cut. Now my texturizing shears might come in here and I might just shatter this in here so we get more movement. But other than that, I'm not blending all the way through with a texturizing shear. Just my preference. What I see throughout the years that works and gives you what you want. Blending the whole haircut in with a texturizing shear is something that most people that are afraid to use this because they might cut too much off. But a lot of people don't realize that you can still cut too much off with a texturizing shear. So this is in here. I'm coming in. You see the shape now. I missed the part. Why? I didn't cross check the back. That's okay. Adams. Following all the way around. Looks good to me. Coming in again. Through the back and off the head. Where the comb leaves the head is where the scissors leave. One more spot right here. Always stand square to your mannequin or your person. I'm not standing over here, cutting in here. I'm standing square. So if I'm cutting right here, I need to be facing right here. Nice. So if you look in now, always step back, look at the profile of your client. Because now I can see the shape of the cut and I can see what needs to be cut and what isn't. Now, taking the steps I've just taken is making my guideline, cutting my top, connecting, and then fading it out with the scissor over comb. I shouldn't have to go through and do too many altercations. Now, that comes with experience. If you don't have experience, you have to learn. And by only way you can learn is by doing it multiple times. So, I mean, my shape looks pretty great to me. The top, great length to do some styling, but at the same time, there's still a lot of bulk and it's real, real blocky looking. So I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna shatter it by point cutting. Main thing with point cutting, take it slow. You will cut your fingers. And you gotta make sure you don't cut them too bad. So you gotta take it slow. You gotta take your section where else, wherever you want it to, to break up. I'm thinking up here. And if I come in at a 12 o'clock cut, it's going to add a lot of texture, but it's not going to be crazy. Now, if I come in at 7, it's going to add a chunkier texture. And you could also remove length doing it this way. So I'm going to come in like this, and I'm going to make my cuts. Now, I can go crazy, make it look real choppy, but if I just do, I like to do about 4 to 5, and that's just going to break up the clump of hair that I got. all the way across, wherever I just want to add more texture, more play. So I really want a lot of movement in the front and I want a lot of movement towards the back. And here, doesn't matter, you don't have to go crazy with it, but you can still do some. Now, after a while of doing this, you get to be faster with it. I didn't start out going fast. I took my time and I made sure I was doing the proper technique. And as you do it more and more, you get more precise with it. Are you using a six and a quarter blade? I am. So this is the uh, six and a quarter. It's not a swivel thumb. Um, swivel thumbs are great. For some reason, I really love these. Okay. And you, that you did all you did. That's the same shear you use for your your shear over comb, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. So thank you. So shear length. Um, some things you need certain lengths. Something and most of it to me is preference. I prefer a six or a six and a half to a six and a quarter for doing the majority of my cuts. Now, if I'm doing uh, 
more of like a really tight bob. I don't know why I prefer like a seven inch here because I kind of ride along the neckline. But when I first started cutting and doing all these different techniques and learning them, I actually like a five and a half inch shear because with a smaller blade learning, you tend to be more conscious of where the blade's going versus with a longer one. But once you're comfortable, just do whatever, whatever length you feel comfortable with. Good stuff. Thank you. Yeah. Definitely start out with a shorter shear point cutting off. So I'm going to come in the back now. Top point cut. I'm going to comb out. That's real bulky. I'm going to come in and I'm going to cut. So I want to have one clump of hair, two clumps of hair, three clumps of hair, four clumps of hair, because those clumps, when you style it, it's going to show the movement. It's going to, you're going to be able to make it look piecey and have its own texture to it. If I point cut at 12 o'clock and I just come in crazy, it's just going to feel lighter, less bulky versus looking less bulky. Make her a little taller for you. All the way around. I'm going to shatter this around the crown of the head. I want it to be soft. I don't want it to be a hard shape. I want it to be a prominent shape, but a soft shape. Looking good, man. Thank you. Now, I could come in using my texturizing shear and break that up, but with that, I run the risk of cutting too much hair that I don't want to cut. With going with my regular shear and I'm holding, I can see the shape that I have cut and pick it apart and dissect it versus coming in and possibly taking off more than I want because there's teeth versus one tip of a blade, one tooth pretty much. But even if I was to do this, I would do one cut towards the bottom, one towards the top. It almost gives it like a shattered skyline effect. The best thing about your swivel, I don't have to bend my wrist. When I'm doing my cuts, I keep a relaxed position on my wrist as a swivel of thumb. This versus that. That's the benefits of a swivel shear. Relaxes your wrist, prevents carpal tunnel, all the good stuff. Now you see there's there's no product. I got a like a conditioner in it, leave-in conditioner so I could comb through it. But other than that, without product, without heat, I could already build my shape and style that I want. You can already see how the cut is. So walk us through how you would style that then. Just walk us through it real quick, what you would use and how you would do it, please. Blow drying, what I would do is I'd come in and I'd, whenever you want volume, you have to blow dry the opposite way. So I would come in and I'd blow dry all this up in the back. The sides would get blow dried that way. This side would go the other way. The back would go, the front would go to the back. And as I start, Manipulating the hair with the heat because we use heat to manipulate hair and product to control it. I'm going to start building my shape with the heat itself. So once I build what I do with my blow dryer, you can start moving the hair around without really affecting where it lays because now the heat has pressed the hair in a sense. So after I do that, I build with the heat what I want to do, where I want it to lay, where I want it to move. Then I take my product and you add it and that just holds it in place of what you just did with your blow dryer. So once you add the product, you can start shaking it out in the back and you're still gonna have that shape without losing the lift because you already blow dried it. Same thing on the top and the sides. Once you blow dry and you add your product, you're gonna have the volume you want and then you're gonna have the product to manipulate and put the little pieces and then move the pieces this way and that way 
and create your style. And since we got the texture, when I go like this, the hair doesn't look blocky anymore. The hair moves on its own. So now you see. Good, good stuff, shape. man. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, shape here and the shape there. Just softly leaving the head. Now, if this client, what's her name? If Miss Daisy here was uh, decided to wake up and not style her hair, she wouldn't have a problem of her hair looking crazy because it's all blended. So she could not style it and the hair is still gonna look great. A nice clean cut all the way through. Now with a lot of undercuts, if some people don't style their hair, they might look like they got a bowl on the head. That's just the cut that they chose. So this is your everyday clean haircut here. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Great job, man. Super stoked you came on with us. Appreciate it. Thank you. So what's going to happen is uh, uh, for everybody who's still here, we'll give you a minute or two. Uh, all kinds of compliments to you, of course. So great job. You know, doing a haircut on a mannequin like that that's light colored as well, man, you can see everything. So you, great <laughs> job. Yeah, yeah. Right, way to uh, way to put your put put yourself in a position to uh, to show off your skills. I appreciate it. This will be up on our YouTube in the next twenty four hours, um, and and stay tuned for more awesome education coming your guys' way. Stay safe up there, my man. We'll talk to you soon. Of course. All right, bro. Take care. You too. Bye.